Today at Manchester Theatres, I am here with Ashford Campbell, who is touring with the West End hit, The Drifters Girl, and he's coming to the Manchester Opera House from the 10th of October, so not long to go. Now, Ashford is no stranger to big musical theatre, having performed in shows such as Nine to Five, Dream Girls, Beautiful and Hairspray, to name a few. And when he isn't treading the boards or performing in musical theatre workshops, he's also been on television, been a part of the X Factor and done huge arena tours with the likes of Little Mix and Peter Andre. So we are very, very excited that you are going to be part of the Drifters Girl heading towards Manchester. So thank you very much for joining us, Ashford. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. And obviously, I love Manchester. Anywhere north, I'm sold. Absolutely. It's all about the North today. <laughs> well, always. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Drifters Girl, we want to know all about it. So, obviously, we've got the Drifters Girl, who is Faye Treadwell. So, tell us all about her story. Um, so, it's an interesting one. Uh, her, she was actually from education and uh, teaching, and she ended up being thrown into this world of the music industry. And she was like the, the first female and first African-American female at that to sort of manage and have success with such a big, on such a big scale with such a big band as The Drifters. And it sort of follows her life and her struggles working in like a male dominated environment and dealing with racism and sexism and love and loss. And then you also get to see the story of The Drifters, which I didn't know like half of it until I started this, which is been an eye opener but I love it it's really good fun you'll laugh you'll cry and you'll get your bums wiggling in the seat we always love a good bum wiggle <laughs> <laughs> so you're playing two different parts you're playing Rudy Lewis who is one of the many 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 drifters and yep. also Ben E King so tell us a little bit about how he fits into the whole drifters thing uh well Benny King was originally part of the drifters before he was known as Benny King. He was known as Ben Nelson. Um, so you see how that unfolds within the story. And the, it's really fun playing him. He's a bit of a villain in the show. He's stubborn. He goes head to head with Faye. Um, so it's nice digging into that and then absolutely flipping it and playing Rudy Lewis, who's an absolute sweetheart. And your heart just melts from meeting him and watching his story unfold. And he gets to sing like my favourite song in the show, which is Under the Boardwalk as well. So Honestly, I was literally about to come to that and say my one of my all-time favourite songs, not just in, in the show, but one of my all-time favourite songs is Under the Boardwalk. I love well, that. Yeah, I have the privilege of singing that eight times a week and it is, it's so fun. It's a big song, but I love it. It's not, um, it's not one of those that I dread singing. I, I absolutely look forward to it every night. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm pleased about that. Well, I was going to say, because obviously you hear the Drifters and there's so, I mean, the songs just flood your mind, like Saturday Night at the Movies, Up on the Roof, Save the Last Dance, all these different songs. And you kind of, um, you've heard them at family parties, um, you know, grown up with them and things like that. And you kind of think, yeah, I've got this, they're easy songs. Have, have you had, though, because they've been given this musical theatre makeover, when you've come to learn them, have you kind of had any kind of vocal surprises thinking that's actually a really tough song to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think individually the songs are all challenging in their own ways, but then when you put them all back to back and singing them all in the course of one show, you think well, by the time it gets to the end, I'm like, God, I'm exhausted. <laughs> but I'd say it's probably Land of Make Believe, which is my vocally hardest song because it comes straight after under the boardwalk oh. <laughs> so it's uh yeah back to back big songs but i love the challenge it's yeah. it's nice to find a place to dig deep when you need to but also like we work hard in rehearsals and learning it and finding where to place things so that you get the best out of your voice for eight times a week and obviously we've got the drifters music some of which i've just mentioned but We've said you play Ben E. King, so I'm guessing that we've got Stand By Me in there, maybe, have we? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's another one of my songs. <laughs> <laughs> there we yeah. go. That's I love that song as well. Um, that 
is like a crowd favourite. They love it every night. Um, so it's daunting. <laughs> you know, God, I hope I sing this song well. But yeah, it's a great song. It's a classic. Yeah, you can, I mean, you can't go wrong with this, with these kind of songs, can you? They're just, they're just iconic. Yeah. Timeless, Saturday Night, the movies. Unfortunately, I don't sing that one, but it's another great one. Everyone's clapping from the get-go. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, they've just got great songs and the timeless, like, they still resonate with older generations, younger generations, like, everyone in between. It's, it's a uh, timeless music. Yeah, it is. And, We've got, um, obviously, um, George Treadwell to kind of thank for this, who, now, this is, my dad started trying to explain this to me, and I was like, what? So he licensed the name The Drifters, which kind of enabled loads of different versions of The Drifters to be out there at the same time. Is that is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in, within the story, it goes into more details in the show, that basically because the Drifters had so many members over the years, you know, some got drafted to war, some left, some were fired. Um, a lot of people are like, well, I was the original member, so let's start a Drifters group because I was, I've was i been in the Drifters, so I'm a Drifter. So then they would start a group and then someone else was like, well, we can market a drift, uh, Drifters group because we've got someone that was in it for six weeks. <laughs> and it sort of spiralled from there. So within the story, it shows how Faye sort of fought back to take control of her legacy and the thing that she'd create from the beginning. Yeah, it's incredible. And I guess it's kind of like, I was trying to find something comparable because in music terms, I don't think there is, I'm, I might be wrong, but but I was thinking it's kind of like you've got, right, you've got a football club and you've got all these famous players who play for the club. They might leave and go to a different club, but they the, the club doesn't disband because of it. You've still got yeah. the strength in that name. And yeah. You, do you think that's kind of one of maybe the reasons that they've stayed so alive? I mean, they're still performing yeah. today, aren't they? It's Yeah, it's a household name and they've got so many hits. And there's actually a line very similar to that in the show, um, in that something along the lines of, um, there'll only ever be one New York Yankees and you can't start a new team and call it the Yankees just because somebody that was in the Yankees is now there. Like, there'll only ever be one New York Yankees. Oh. 15 minutes. Sorry, 15 minutes. See, being bing-bonged. <laughs> bing-bonged. So, yeah, like, you've got the household name and the people that have been a part of it, but it doesn't make any spin-offs the original. Like, there'll only be one original. Yeah. And then in the 70s, so the Drifters came over to um, England, well, to, to Britain, and were huge, absolutely yeah. massive. But not so much in the USA at the time, were they? Yeah. That's it's, um, and I think that was, again, it's revealed in the story sort of the battle that they had with trying to fight for the, the trademark and things. They came to England and they just had massive success. So I think it was just conquering another market just, and it shows, again, how much power and how much gravitas they had as a household name and with their discography. And, um, yeah, they got another, however many number, how many number ones did they get? A few. I'd be lying if I a gave lot. Them right now. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, a lot. Um, so obviously, as well as them having all of their number ones, it's been put into a musical, which is why, obviously, um, in 2022, it was nominated for um, Best New Musical for an Olivier. And it's run in the West End. It's a huge success. It gets picked up and taken on tour. Does that then involve any changes um, from having kind of like residents to being able to physically move it around all these different places, does it does it have to kind of change in any way? Yeah, I mean, um, some of the choreography um, has to change simply because the set that they have in London, some of it won't be able to tour with it and get, in, get into a truck, basically. So some little bits are adapted and learning from all the audiences that came to watch us in London have adapted bits to sort of work better for um, audience participation and uh, jokes and things like that. Um, but the, the essence of the show is still very much the same and the choreography, 95% of it's the same, which is it's nice. I, I did, um, I covered when I was in London with it, okay. but I stepped into the role for the tour. So it's nice seeing and being a part of 
the creative process of creating the tour version. So it's been, yeah, it's lovely. I love the show. It's yeah. It's probably my favourite show I've done. Well, I was going to say, so what is the best thing about being in, I mean, this is kind of like one of them open-ended questions, isn't it? But what's, <laughs> one of the, what's one of the best things about being in the Drifters Girl? Or is it that it changes every day? That Your favourite thing, maybe, it changes every my day? My favourite thing, I find new moments in it every day that I love. Um, but I'd say my, one of the best things is because it's such a small cast, it's six of us on stage. Um, sometimes it's just two of us in a scene. It's um, we all multi role play apart from Faith Fredwell. So we all play, I think I play 17 different characters in total. So it's just the challenge of, of being having to be so versatile playing uh, a waitress in one breath and then uh, uh, a taxi driver in another to then going to Benny King. It's it's challenging and funny. It pushes you as an actor and yeah. as a creator. like. As performers, we like to be creative, and it's the perfect show to do that. Yeah, and have fun, like you say, with the audience at the same time, and know that you're just yes. getting that love back. It's kind of before you even go out there, you know you've got an audience that's just going to love this, don't you? Yeah, because not everyone can get down to London as well. It's yes. it's expensive, it's the tickets, it's the travel, and possibly a hotel if you're not relatively close. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to bring the show to a lot of people that haven't seen it. And a lot of my friends and family haven't been down to London to see it so we've been in Bradford this week and I've had about 20 people in every show it's been <laughs> wild I love it I love it well thank you very very much for um you know bringing that energy on tour we cannot wait genuinely cannot wait it's it's the kind of show I haven't seen it yet but it's the kind of show seen the trailers and I can just imagine it's all about the vibes isn't it the good vibes and vibes. yeah you've, vibes. you've got that story but you know the music just picks you up um, yeah, it does. And I, I'm I'm really excited for Manchester as well. Got a lot of people coming there too. And Manchester's fun. So it's Manchester. It is. We do love Manchester. We do love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Ashford. I know you've been bing bonged, so I will let you get back <laughs> to rehearsals. Um and Thank we you. cannot wait to see you in the Drifters Girl at the Opera House Manchester from the 10th of October. So we are waiting. Thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me and I'll see you next week. I'll see you next week. We've got the group everybody's talking about at the start of their huge nationwide tour, The Drifters! Saturday night at the movies Who cares for picture you see? Stand by me, stand by me.